Thank you, Lord, that your spirit would move right now, God, that you would speak from heaven, God. Not from my own strength, not from my own flesh, not from my own thinking, God. But I thank you, Lord, that your spirit empower my mortal body and my mind, God. Thank you, Lord, that you would speak to your people, God. Speak exactly what you want to say, God. Exactly what's going to bring us to the next glory, God. I think something's up with this mic. It's kind of what nice. Got? We're fixing. Hey, yeah, fixing. It's good now, right? Check, check, check. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you're changing us, God. <clears throat> that we have no capability to change ourselves, God. What we have capability to do is submit to you, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you would tenderize our hearts to submit to you, God. That we would know, even in the hardest things, God, when to submit to you, God, we wouldn't resist, God. Break all our resisting, God. And I thank you, Lord, you're going to clean the altar of our hearts, God. You're going to clean the deep depths of our hearts, God. You're going to clean the deep depths of our mind, God. You're going to clean the deep depths of our eyeballs, God. Of our eyeballs and our heart, God. What we're after, God, you're going to clean it, God. You're going to break up everything that we want, God, that is not of you, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to tear, you're not just going to tear the fruit down, you're going to tear the root down, God. You're going to rip it all out, God. You're going to clean us from even the deepest depths of ourselves, God. Thank you, Jesus. This message is called, uh, What Do You Want? What do you want? And what we want is we want the kingdom, we want God, right? But it's sometimes the things around the other wants, the other desires that surround that one seed of, of our want for God. It mixes. The, wants, the, the seed of God has to be alone in you. It can't be God and His kingdom and then this, this other stuff. See, we have wants that there's, diff there's a difference. There's, I, can, I can want, there's nothing wrong with me wanting to go to Denny's right now. Or, well, actually, there is something wrong with that. But there's no, nothing wrong with me being, wanting to be, wanting to go, <laughs> wanting to go to Longhorn and wanting to, or let me use a better one. There's nothing wrong with me wanting me, my, my family to be saved. To there's nothing. Lodge. Who? What is it? Moose Lodge. Moose Lodge? There's something wrong with wanting to go to Moose Lodge. Yeah, that, there is something wrong with that. <laughs> Besides those points, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with me wanting my family to be saved. There's nothing wrong with me wanting to walk in the fullness of God. Or, or the, the, actually, X that one out. There's nothing wrong with me wanting things to that rel relative, relative, revel Re how do you say that word? Relative. Relativeness. But it's when those other wants that are less important than what you're supposed to be focusing on become the focus. It's when we, and, and this is what we do too, is we, let's say we want, you know, and I'll use the family because that, that could be something relative to me. If I want my family to be saved so much to the point that everything I do when it comes to the kingdom wraps around that. Whatever we want... Whatever our wants and desires are, are going to play into everything we do. Everything, all our wants and desires are going to play into what we say, what we preach, where we go, what we do. It'll even affect things. It can even, uh, it can even come down, and we're going to get into how that's possible. It can even come down to it. It can affect things in the kingdom, like, like discernment. If I have the wrong wants... It can affect, it can, it can dull my discernment. Or it can dull my gift. Or it can turn my gift into a curse. And I can become a false prophet or, or a hireling or whatever, or whatever and such. There's people out there with gifts. But because of the wrong desires, because of covetness. Let's go to, let's do this real quick. I wasn't going to, I'm not in order today, so bear with me. What am I ever in order anyway? Uh, <laughs> go to 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. Two Peter one. Wow. The 
Is Peter at, where is Peter? Where's Peter, guys? Back. Towards the back. Towards the back? Yeah. Oh. Then there's John. Right after James. Right after James. Hebrews, then James. Hebrews, James. Hebrews, then James. John? Okay, he Peter. Hebrews gotcha. And James. You would think when I was in my parents' household, we read the Bible over and over and over, two, two three times a year, but still don't even know where. The only book I know where it is is Revelation. Anyway. <laughs> um, 2 Peter 2 through 1 through 3. But there was false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false prophets, false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and brung upon them swift destruction, brung upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their per perniscuous ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be spoken, or be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, What's covetousness? Is, is, a, is evil desires, worldly desires. Do covetousness, shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, whose judgment of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Do covetousness. These men and these women are out there and they're false prophets and false teachers. Through wants, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be, war, it doesn't necessarily have to be material desires or material, or coveting material things. It can also be coveting, covering, coveting like being, you know, the next best thing. Coveting to be, you know, the, big, the next big cheese that walks in the church. Coveting to have a big ministry. Coveting even to be a, a, a certain person in the body of Christ. Because... You know, we don't covet to be a pastor, evangelist, apostle, or prophet. God calls you to what you're called to. That's right. So when people are coveting this, I was just talking to someone. They were telling me, oh, yeah, I'm gonna become a, I want to become a pastor and all that. What do you mean you want to become a pastor? Has God called you to that? What if, you're, what if you are supposed to be a prophet or what if you're supposed to be evangelist or what if you're supposed to be none of them? And you're going to go in there and then you, God's not going to be on it. And you're going to create another pastoral church that America doesn't need. And then we're going to have a bunch of more spirits in the church that we don't need. And this is the problem. And I talked, and, we, and me and Chase also know a kid that is in the world, and he was in our old job too. And he's like, yeah, one day I want to be a pastor. And he's not even saved. So it's like, these desires that are even sound godly. And that's our, and that's, and that can be our problem in the in the in the body of Christ in the remnant. See, in the in the false church in the world, they're all in the false church because they're going after other desires. And the sad part is when those some of those people were going, most people who, I mean, I mean most, I mean it has to be all people who got saved. When they got when they got saved, they were after Christ. When they got saved, they were happy about their salvation. That's all they thought about. But then it came. When they wanted to go after their dreams. And then it came when they wanted to go after being in leadership. Even wanting to be going out, go, go after being in leadership can be an idol. And can, and can ruin you. Through covetousness. And then we miss the kingdom of God. And then we, we wonder why. You see, some of the things we do. Like, let's say, for example. And I know I've been talking about this a lot lately, but this... I don't know, it's just, that's the only thing that can come to me. But let's say, for example, we have offenses. Let's say we, we, we try to always, oh, we're not going to get offended. Oh, I'm not going to get offended. I'm not going to get offended. Then we get offended. Not going to get offended. Then we get offended. Not going to get offended. Then we get offended. But we have to examine why. I don't want to be offended, but I still get offended. So why is this fruit still producing again and again and again? Is because you have to rip out the root. And part of it, part of, part of our root, excuse me, part of our root is what we want. If, we, if we're wanting every, everybody to see us all the time, we're going to get jealous of others because when another person is, God's using them a lot, we're going to get jealous of them and we're going to have offenses with them. Because really the deep root of why we're offense and we have jealousy is because we want to be seen by everybody. So you want to stop being offended. 
You want to stop being jealous, you need to get rid of your want of wanting to be at the pulpit. You need to get rid of your want of, of wanting to be somebody big in the body of Christ. Our wants are supposed to be purely this, is the kingdom of God come on earth. Is God's will be done, yes. and, and, we, and we eat His bread every day. Yes. Uh, the Our Father prayer was a prayer that God was, was telling them, basically, He wasn't saying necessarily pray that. He was saying, this is the desires you should have in the kingdom. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thine will be done. Thine will be done. There's the desire. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So, desiring heaven to come on earth. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread. Desiring what? The word of God. Yes. And forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So there you go. Amen. Give us bread. We want, we want the word. We want the kingdom to come on earth. We want, to, we want to forgive others. We want to please you, God. What was that last part again? The last part of the Our Father prayer? And lead us not into temptation. That's what you should be wanting. Because that's the kingdom. That's what Jesus is telling you your desire should be. But when our desire is this, anything else outside of that, it's, it's going to mess us up. And we're going to have fruit on our tree... And we're wondering why I, I cut it down and 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 I struggle and I go around the mountain, go around the mountain, go around the mountain. It's because you need to get to the root of it. You need it. You need it. Some, not all the time, but most of the time, it's because of what you want. God said simply to me this week, and this is me like, laboring, laboring in the spirit, blah, blah, blah. My, not in the, I wasn't in my closet. Right? I, was, I was at work mopping. And I'm just like, and, but in my heart, that's the difference. People say, oh, you got to get in the closet. Relax. You can be, that's why Paul said pray without ceasing, because you can be in the spirit wherever you are. I don't have to be praying in a closet. I can be praying, I can be right now, here, before you guys, before a thousand people, and still be in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the closet in the spirit with the Father, in the throne room. So that's, that's, a, that's, that's religious right there. And usually, people that are going in the secret, are going in the secret place all the time in the closet, really they are going in the closet so they can come out and boast about it all the time. Because why? Because they want to be seen. And this is what God told me this week. Hold on. This is what God told me. I'm not, I'm not looking for what God told me. I know what he told me. I'm looking for something else. He said, if you want me, you will have me. So the question is, how come sometimes I don't have them? How come sometimes I'm in witchcraft? How come I'm double-minded? Because you want me, but you also want this. You want me, but you also want that. You want me, but you want your cake and eat it too. And he says, pluck out the wants that are not of God. You, you are being, we are being religious when we keep trying to cut fruit, but he says, you keep trying to cut fruit, you're doing dead works because you need to change your heart. You need to clean the inside of the cup. You need, to, you need to stop worrying about everybody, a lot of, a lot of times, and, we, uh, and sometimes we get out of this and sometimes we go back in this, but a lot of times we worry so much about our actions, when God's saying you need to stop worrying about your actions, and you need to start worrying about the foundation that's being, that's come, that's being planted in your heart. And you need to worry about taking out the other foundation. And part of the other foundation, which you were founded on from the world, is your wants and desires. Paul said, Mortify the deeds of the flesh that you do not what you want. We're not here. This is what I wrote down. Our want over his equals death. When our wants come over God's wants and desires. See, because we do have our own desires to a sense. But they're, they're, st they're still pure and, and not, and not, and not what's loaded with sin. That's the difference. So... Because he says, I'll fill the desires of your heart. So when our wants come over his wants, that's when it reaps forth death in our life. Because if our, what, our, what, our, what, the, what, what we want, what we want is ultimately going to be either God or an idol. And then he said this, his wants over our wants simply is this, life. Life. Because when I'm sitting here and I'm receiving the word of God, if I purely want the word of God with no strings attached, with no other wants, with no this, oh, I want, 
I, oh, I just want this and this to happen for my family and this and this to happen with my job and this and this to happen here and this and this to happen here. And guess what you're not thinking about the whole time is the bread from heaven. When you purely want the word of God without any other strings attached, you get the word of God. And then you sit here and you're not falling asleep anymore. Now, and then you sit here and then you feel the fire coming from the pulpit. Because I tell you what, sometimes we sit and there's fire. We saw it in Nicaragua. There's fire coming from the pulpit and people are falling asleep or walking outside. Why? Because they're desiring something else. If I give you steak and you don't want steak, you're not going to eat steak. If you want fish, let's say the steak is, is, is the word of God and the fish is, is, is other stuff. Guess what? Well, you're not receiving the word of God because you don't want it. That's why it's also, we need, it's a, that's also that revelation that I spoke about last time about God, and we know this, but we need to, we, this needs to be our central, the central of our mind and hearts is the word, Jesus, Jesus is the word of God. So we have to realize when we're, when we're receiving the word of God, when we're taking it, when we're going after it, Christ is being filled in me. Yes. Christ is being filled in you. Yes. Christ is filling you. People in other churches, they go to, they go to churches and they're like, Oh, they think Christ is just a feeling all the time. Yeah, I just, can't. I just go to that church and I feel some giggles and, and chickles and whatever. And that's it. Okay, what about the Word? Well, if there's no Word, you're not being filled with Christ. It's familiar. It's other spirits. There's, you know, there's people, and then you, go, you see these other churches, and it's like, they're, they're, in, they're soaking and soaking, and I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, God is so good, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, but they're not preaching the Word. Yeah. So what's the deal? There's other spirits that can make you feel false joy and false peace. They're, they're, they're seducing spirits that creep in the church. Even, even Paul warned Christians, Christians, not the world, Christians, about seducing spirits that creep in unawares. They creep in unawares and they make you feel giggly. They make you feel good. But it's not pure. It's not the Holy Ghost. Everything the devil does is an imitation, is a copycat of what God does. So yeah, he's going to make you, the devil's not going to come in, he says he's, it says he's as an angel of light. Yeah. So how can we think the devil's going to come in and be like, the devil, oh, oh. No, he's going he's gonna to feel, he's going to try to copy the Holy, Holy Spirit. He's going to even try to copy the word, but there's going to be, it's going to be divination because there's going to be another agenda behind that word that you're hearing. This is what God, this is what also God downloaded to me. If we want sin, if we want sin, guess what? We're going to end up loving false grace and false love teachings. If we want, if we want to be lifted up, we'll end up being legalistic. If we want to be seen by men, we'll probably be into the Hebrew, Hebrew root stuff. Because all those people are there. If they want, it says that the shepherd leads his, his sheep. So how are these sheep being led to the Hebrew roots place and the false grace place? And because when I went to these places, my stomach turned up and I was like, what is this? And I, even, and I, and I went in there because I was seeking the word of God and I tried to avoid that feeling, but I couldn't avoid it. So how are these people going to these Hebrew roots stuff? How are these people going into this legalism places? How are these people going into the false grace places? Why? Because they're after something else. They're not after Christ. And some people get stuck because maybe they get pulled there by a friend and then they get deceived in witchcraft and they say, Oh man, you're not, you're, you're, you, got, you need to repent because blah, blah, blah. But the, most of those people there, they're, they're not seeking God. They're seeking themselves. Because I'm telling you, you the shepherd will lead you. Unless you're the sheep that's wandering off. Because then there's, the sh then there's sheep that are the sheep, but then they're going after God, their wants and desires, and this is why we have to know this, because we can, we can go after God and go after Him with all our desires and wants, but then, another, then one day we have another want, and that want slowly starts to chip away, chip away, chip away at, all, at our wants for God, and then we start wandering, and then God, Jesus has to go chase us down again. And then maybe we do end up in the false grace church because we've seen people that do that. We've seen people that are in the real church. We've seen people that are amongst the real remnant. And then they go to the false place. Why? God didn't do it. Because their heart. What do they want? Do you want to, are you, do you want to prove yourself to everybody? Because if that's what you want, 
Everything you do is going to flow out of that. And then you're going to always be telling people this and that. You're always going to be... When Then when you tell people, like, it's okay. Like, I did it recently. It's okay for me to come to my brothers and sisters and tell them about what God did at the job or tell them what God did at my house. But when I'm doing that because I want people to see, oh, you're, I'm awesome. I, I'm, I'm one of you too or I'm, I'm proven. But that's, that's, it's going to be loaded and then nobody's going to receive from you. And then nobody, because nobody wants to feed that spirit in you. There's a difference when I come to people and I just want them to show the, show the glory of Christ so that they can get stirred up. But when I'm doing that because I want to prove myself or I'm, or I'm seeking attention or I want people to see that I am in the body of Christ too, hello, we're seeking the wrong thing. And then we wonder why. God's not doing nothing. And then we're going around the mountain. And, some of, and sometimes, and I'm, I, some people know what I call this, but I'm not going to say it for the sake of if there's children watching this. But I'm going to use another word. But some of us are just attention seekers. And if you want me to tell you off camera what I was going to just kidding. Um, but some of us are attention seekers, and that's a root, a want, a desire that actually brings forth many fruits, bad fruits. We want uh, so much attention, and then we're, ta we're, so, we're so focused. You know what happens when I want attention so much? I get so focused on myself. I get so focused on everybody listening to me that even when I talk, to, when people talk to me, I can't even hear them because all I'm worried about is what I'm going to say next. Because all, I, all I'm worried about is when I preach or when I talk and when I post on Facebook. And then you, you come to a point where you can't even like anybody else's post. And then you come up with another excuse as to why you don't like anybody else's post. But really, it's because you want people to give more attention to you. And then God has to start, God has to start putting in people's spirits to turn the other way so they don't give in to, feed into that thing. These are wants and desires we have to pluck out. Because if, they don't, if we don't pluck it out, in the end game, if that thing keeps growing and growing and growing for years and years and years, guess what's not going to be growing? The seed of God in you. So we need to tear that out. And there's other little, little wants and desires. And sometimes our wants... Okay, so I did some... I asked somebody that knows, is an expert on this about how plants or grass has roots. But did you know that the roots of those plants and grass can either tangle together with other, with other roots or, they, or that root can actually help get more growth by growing into another root? So sometimes our wants and desires, sometimes we have a want and desire, but we can't necessarily get rid of that want and desire by just repenting. We actually have to go deeper than that. For example... If I want to prove myself to, so bad to everybody, maybe it was because I had a wound from high school. Maybe because in high school, nobody thought I was anything. <coughs> maybe in high school, everybody looked down on me. And then because of that wound I got, now I want to prove myself. So we, so, so we sometimes have to go back deeper than that root of desire or want and go back to, the, back to that place and get healed. Or if, uh, if my parents hit me or abused me, or, or hurt me, or called me names, then I, want, I, I don't want to receive correction. Because every time I receive correction, I feel like from my, my days of my parents. So that want, of, that, that not wanting of correction actually needs to be, you need to be healed from your past. But there's a good, there's, it's, it's good when you recognize and sometimes there's going to be wants and desires that you can't pluck out because you have to go deeper than that. But sometimes you pluck out that want and desire and it comes out and you get free. So we have to, and, and in the meanwhile, there's sometimes going to be wants and desires. Like I want, I want everybody to see me or I struggle with pride. Sometimes you just have to suppress it for a time. But the, but the best thing is, the difference is, those that, this is it, those that cover up their sin... What does it say? Those that cover up their sin will uh, not be exalted by God or something like that. You guys know what I'm talking about Psalms? Those that cover up their sin will never, won't be exalted or won't be, or will reap forth death, something like that. 
But those that, that, that expose their sin, will, 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 God will bless them. Those that expose those desires and those wants to themselves and before God and if brothers and sisters if needed, they will be, they will be free in the end game. Whatever deep wants in our heart will play into our life. What we preach, what we do, how we flow, how we think, how we think. And we just talked about mindsets. And some of you hear the word, hear a word that is contrary to a mindset, but we struggle so much with that word because that mindset that we're, we're battling the, with, the, with again, taking, the, taking that mindset and battling the word of God with is rooted in a desire unholy desire and we have to pluck out that want we have to recognize it's not of God we have to get rid of it it also affects how we flow what I want is going to flow into if I'm preaching today and there's wants that are not of God it will flow into how I preach I'll be, if, I, if I'm so obsessed with you know money I'm going to be talking about money a lot. If I'm so obsessed with family, I'll be talking about that a lot. It'll hear me, you'll hear that come out of my mouth a lot. In my praying, that's all I'll be praying about. Or what else is another one? If I'm, if I, if I'm seeking to become, you know, Mr. Big Shot in the church, I'm going to be, I'm, my prayers are going to be hindered because all I'm going to be praying is, oh God, get me to IHOP or Bethel. Oh God, get me here, get me there. And we're wondering. And then when somebody comes and rebukes us, and says, why are you praying for that? And then we're like, what's wrong with it? And we don't know what's wrong with it because we're looking at the mindset and, that, and we need to realize, and then we need to realize the unholy desire for, that we're craving for power. What was Korah's problem? He craved Moses' position. What was Absalom's problem? He craved to be the leader. He craved to, lead the, to, lead, to, lead, to become the king. What was Cain's problem? He just, he, he, wanted more favoritism. yeah, he wanted more favoritism. Who's another one? And there's others in the, in the Bible. They wanted leadership. They wanted, and usually in the, in the Bible, it was, it was leadership or power or, or, or David wanting, wanting, uh, wanting, uh, sexual stuff. And then he ends up cheating. Our wants and our desires need to be genuine and kingdom. That's why we have to hear the word of God. Because when we hear the word of God, we will know what God wants and what he desires. And when we, we know what God wants and desires, we will take it upon ourselves because we will realize that my identity is in this word. And, and, and I will identify with what I'm supposed to, what, I'm, what I was destined to want or desire. What I was, you were destined to have wants and desires that were pure and holy. But because of the fall, that's why we fell. There are wants that are good, but they don't line up with his word. And they are, and they're idols. And, and, and like I said, when we have wants that... You know, there's a, wants that are good, they're not necessarily bad, but they become so prevalent in our life that we get so focused on it. Jesus. When we become, when we want our, let's say when we want our friend or who is worldly or something like that to be saved. But if our friend becomes the focus, then we become misfocused. And when we become misfocused, we become misled. We become no longer led by the spirit, but we become led by our belly. And then because we're in the church and because we, we've heard the word of God and we have some word in us, we use the word... And we have that agenda or want or desire, and it's and it's not the and it's not from God. Any word that comes out of our mouth that we call it from God or presents itself as as God, but is not is divination. 
And those who have a spirit of divination are really those ones who have the hidden wants and desires. Somebody who, who walks, has a strong spirit of divination is somebody who has wants and desires that are either so, they're all so focused on or wants and desires that are unholy. And they have to be plucked out. You want, the, you want to stop being a diviner, you need to pluck that out. You need to stop, you need to stop focusing on that thing or focusing on that want or wanting that thing in general. When we, when we have, sometimes what our wants play into the church is like this. Sometimes we want church or we want things in the body to be a certain way. We want, we want things to be a certain way. We, want, we have our own vision of how we want church to be. And then guess what happens? And then you come in with a Jezebel spirit. Because... God says, I want things to be in this order. I want things to be in this way. I want it to be th done this way. But because you envision your, your way of how things are supposed to be so much, you come and you come against the plan of God. And then you'll even start reaping fruits of control and manipulation. Because you see it another way. And then you come against God's messengers and then you bring witchcraft. And it's all because you want church to be, you want things in, in, in ministry or you want things in church to be a certain way. When the kingdom of God, when it comes to church, you're not going to know. Nobody really knew when they came to the kingdom of God how God's order was or how God wants it to be. We all learned it. So we have to get our minds out of how we think this is all supposed to work, out of how we think singing is supposed to go, out of how we think preaching is supposed to go, out of how we think the office stuff is supposed to go, out of how we think, of who we think we should talk to or not, we need to clean all of that. And we need to learn how God operates. Because we're in the kingdom of God, yes, our spirit's born again, but our mind still needs to be renewed. Praise God. We need to learn how God operates. We need to learn how God does order, how God does things, His ways. So it's better to have a clean slate than have a slate and build it on top of God's. And that's what many people are doing in, these, in false churches and, and churches that God's not on. Is they saw it another way. They must have had visions of smoke machines and karaoke lights. And then it became what, what it became. And then there's spirits all over the place. Because it's not God's vision. And why? Maybe the pastor wasn't even called to be a pastor. And it's so rooted deep that... He had that vision of how church is supposed to be because God ain't even anointing him as pastor, so he has to come up with something. And because, all because he doesn't want to submit to apostles and prophets in the fivefold ministry, he gets this vision because he really just wanted to be a pastor all along. And when we have no oil, when we have no anointing, when we have no blueprint from heaven, we come up with stuff. That's right. And that's why the deepest thing is to, is to get our wants and desires right. I want his ways. I want to know how you do it, God. I want to know how you think. I, it's, like I said, it's better to just clean the slate and all, and in your whole life. Retain what you already know from God. That, and what you know from God is it won't leave you because it's flesh in you. What you don't know from God, when you hear things that are not from God, it's either your, when you hear things that are not from God, it won't be, become flesh in you. But sometimes we hear things from God and it doesn't become flesh in us because we don't want it to become flesh in us. Why? Because we see everything another way. When we want, this is interesting. When we want love, get me when I'm saying this. Don't think past me, just wait for me to finish. When we want love, we will get false love. When we want joy and peace, we'll get the false one. When we want God, we'll get it all and we'll have it all. When we want God, we'll have the real joy and peace. But it's do you want God or you just want or you just want to you just want to be feel love? Because if you just want love and you don't want God, God is not apart from love. So what guess what's going to happen? You're going to receive the false love of the world. And people want peace so bad. That when God is ready to confront somebody, they get in the way because they're like, 
Oh, Jesus is not like that. Because they just want peace. They don't want, don't, don't ruffle the feathers. You know, I, I know somebody personally, I'm not going to name their name, some of you know, Am I, somebody, not from here, but from up there, you know where. And, <laughs> and I was telling him, I was talking to him about being a husband to his wife, and then he's like, but I just want peace in the house. Because his wife was full of spirits. But he's, he's, he's good, I mean, he, but he must have had a spirit if he's saying this. He's like, I just want peace in my household. I'm like, you know what's wrong with you, brother? Is God wants to give you peace, but because you crave peace over God, mm -hmm. you're never going to get peace. Yep. Because you need to go to your wife, and you need to ruffle the feathers a little bit with the truth, and there's going to be confrontation. It's going to be it's going to be ugly. But when she gets delivered, there'll be peace. But no, he wants peace. Some people make some people in the church they make peace an idol. Some people in the church, they make joy an idol. They want joy so bad that they don't want God. They want love so bad that they miss Him completely and He passes by them. And, and God passes by you because you don't want Him. Because a desire or a want you had overpowered the desire you want. Everybody has kind of that, that, that want for God, but it's a matter of which one is stronger than the other. And which one is wiping out the rest of the wants and desires. Either you want God or you don't. Either, either you want God or you just want the God of your own belly. You want God. You want, and, that's when we, and that's why Paul said there's going to be people that, that preach other Christs. They preach other Christ. Other Christ. They're going to be using the cross. But they're going to twist it their way. They're going to use the, the back door of grace instead of the grace of empowerment that changes us into the image of God. And they're going to say, we'll never be perfect, brother. Because they want it, they want uh, their own God, and it's it's this is all in the Bible, and and I don't it shouldn't have to go back to it because really we've heard the scriptures before, and if you read those books you've seen them. When we want God, it will get it, and and He will be real to us. Here's another one, and this is I mentioned this earlier. What we want can affect our discernment. Some of us wonder sometimes how come my discernment is so dull? How come how come how come I can't I didn't see that? How come I didn't see this? How come I didn't when I when we went, how come everybody else was seeing it but me? Well what do you want to see? Do you want to see what God wants to see? Or do you just want to see the good in people? Do you just want to see the bad in people? Do you just want to see you, want to, you, you love that person so bad you want to see them become a pastor, but God's not even calling them a pastor. When we want to see the good in people all the time, it can actually mess us up. The good thing is not what's necessarily in them. The good thing is the gospel. So when even if we, if we and this is, this is how I have it written down here, we want to see the good in, in, in we want to see the good in people but because we always want to see the good in people, we'll never see the bad in, in people. Because we want to see the bad in people, we'll never see the good in people. We'll always be critical. So we need to get rid of this good and bad crap because we're really eating from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And we need to get back to the tree of life and say, what is reality in this person? This is how it works. Is I don't have anything good or bad. No. I see what is what is reality. What's the wor what's what's true? If it's if it's really bad, I want to see. If it's really good, I want to see. I don't care what it is, I, I'm gonna see it. But with the heart of this, no matter what I see, good or bad, how bad or how good, I'm gonna, it's all so I can so they can further in the kingdom and bring the gospel. Because even if you see the bad in a person, so what? The heart of the gospel is to bring them the gospel. If you do see the bad in the person. It's to bring them the truth, to set them free. If you never see the bad in the person, how are you going to set them free? If you always see the good in the person, you're going to, you're, you're going to put a blindfold over yourself from, from seeing that person. And sometimes we target specific people because maybe we have an offense or jealousy. And we only want to see the bad in them because we, we don't like them. We don't like a person, then guess what? We'll never be able to... When, we, when it comes to discernment, we're never going to be able to rightly discern. 
And our discernment is always going to be clouded and, and, and have that offense or that feeling. With, 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 and then, and then when, when, so, when you see something, like you can see something in a person, and then because of how you feel towards that person, you can exemplify to making this big thing when it's really just a little thing. If we, if we cloud our discernment like that, we can see a, a, a simple, a, a, just a little, little, little scratch in them. But we make it a big deal. We make it a dent. Because I don't like that person, you know? So we need to get real with that. We need to throw the good and bad crap. We need to throw how I feel about this person. Just show me what's real, God. And if, I, and if, I'm, and if I'm feeling so way towards a person, God, but really that what I feel towards them is not in them, show me that so I, can, so I can be with truth, not only with myself, but with my brother or sister. We always, want to, we always want to see what we want to see because we can't, sometimes we can't believe how bad the condition can be. Sometimes you see a person that's on fire, but you don't want to see, they're so on fire that you love it, but it's like then God shows you they have this spirit and that spirit and they have this thing and that thing. It's like, oh no, God, it can't be though. They're fi and then, and then I, I don't want to do anything because I don't want them to, their fire to go down, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Their fire is going to get shut off either way. Because if whatever a person has, if they don't tame that thing, eventually, days, months, weeks, years, it's going to kill them. So we need to look at the deep part. We, know, we don't need to just look at the cover. We need to not look at the smile. We need to look at what, what is God feeling and seeing. We need to not look at the... Sometimes people are, are the opposite, and they don't look so happy. But really, maybe there's nothing really wrong with them. But because... You know, our, our discernment's clouded. We look at their face and we're like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong, what's wrong with you? But nothing's wrong. Oh, you're so happy to know. Oh, you're such a good person. But no, they're not. And you have a dream about them. It's because we need to not, we need to just see it and not, not want anything but with the heart of the gospel. Turn to... Uh, 1 Kings 21 28. All right, oh, let's flip right there. That was God. Finally, God took me to the, right, straight to the book instead of me searching for two hours. 21. Oh, sorry, 1 Kings 21 20, And this is about Ahab. And sometimes we'll get corrected, we'll get rebuked, we'll get a word from a brother or sister, and we don't receive it. And this was Ahab's issue. Let's find out why. But look, look at this first. In 27, 21, 27, and it came to pass, because Ahab. You know about Ahab, right? We all know about Ahab. We should all know about it. He was, he was, he was, he was the Ahab to, he was the Ahab spirit to Jezebel. And he gave in to all Jeze he let Jezebel basically be the, be the king. And let her control and manipulate all because of his wants and desires. All because his wants and desires. And he was originally of Israel, of, of the kingdom of God. But because his wants and desires, Jezebel reigned. So what do you want? Because what you want, if it's not the kingdom, Jezebel's going to reign. In your household, in your, your ministry, in this place, everybody, and everybody that's listening on YouTube right now, if your ministry is filled with Jezebels, what do you want? Do you want to please everybody? Do you want to have many people in your ministry? Because if that's your wants, when Jezebel spirits start moving, you're not going to do anything because you don't want them to leave the church. And it came to pass when Ahab heard those words that he, and because God rebuked him, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. So basically, in New Testament words, he repented. He repented and said, oh God, I'm a wretched man. That's what they would do for some reason. They would just tear off their clothes. And then she tore off his clothes and said, oh, God, I'm a wretch, man, blah, 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 I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I turned over to idols, this, that, and the third. And even the Lord noticed it. And the, Lord, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, 
Seest thou how Ab Ahab humbleth himself before me? Humbleth, even he humbled himself before God. Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in days in, the, in his days, but in his son's days I will bring upon evil. So he even, he even gave him a promise right there. I'm not even going to bring evil in his days. But look what happens. Ahab repents. But if you know the story, you know what's coming next. So I'll turn to 1 Kings 22, 8. And then a prophet came. And I'm not going to go into the in between parts of the story because it's I mean you can read it yourself but it's not much I'm just trying to get to the point point. and then a, another prophet came Micah Micah and Ahab didn't like Micah because Ahab was saying you don't because he doesn't prophesy good things to me he doesn't prophesy what I want to hear so what so that basically you know what's going to happen now he repented, but guess what? He's going to go right back into his sin because he doesn't want it now. So what if he repents? Now what does he want? Does he want to just hear good words because he wants to be lifted up or does he really want to hear what God hears no matter how bad it is? Does he want to be like the woman that Jesus called a dog, but she turned it? See, there's a difference. There's people that God tells them the reality of themselves and they turn it in the intercession and they go after God. And then there's people that they hear the reality of themselves and they say, that's not true. That can't be true. I'm such a good person. I can't. That can't be. Because of pride. 22.8. Are you even on the right thing? Okay, 22.8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet not one man. There, or there is, because they were talking about, is there a prophet that can tell us what the Lord's saying? There is yet one man, Micah, the son of Inla, if I'm saying that right, by whom we may inquire of the Lord of, but I hate him. Why does he hate? Why do you hate him, Ahab? Tell him. For he doeth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. So he even called, so he even called Micah evil because he prophesies truth and, and, and Ahab don't like the truth about himself. And then what happens? And then Micah ends up prophesying. And then guess what happens? He doesn't, Ahab doesn't heed the prophecy because he's like, that can't be what the Lord's saying. And what happens? Ahab dies. Ahab dies in, in the war. He wanted it prophesied that they were going to take over, that they were going to win the battle, they were going to win the war. And guess what happens? He didn't want to heed the word of the Lord, and he died. And then we have many people being spiritually aborted because they don't want to hear the real words in the Lord. And that's why you have part of the problem why we have so many people, so many, so many hirelings, so many prophets that come and just tell everybody a nice word yeah. for hire. Why? Yes, they're bad, but why are the people feeding into this thing? Because they just want to hear good words and smooth words. The real remnant, and we've even seen it in this house, when somebody comes and they and they speak something, and they're just speaking to people's fleshly wants and desires they don't tolerate it they don't tolerate it they're not it, it doesn't matter they can if in the real remnant when somebody comes and says oh this these nice words to lift me up but it's not of god and it's just and it's just a hireling saying that to me the real remnant says i don't care how nice he just said it i don't care even if it was true i'm not receiving that word but ahab people with ahab spirit they're like oh yeah that's so me man because that's what they want to hear. You just, they just want to hear good things. So they cloud, So you can even cloud your discernment on the receiving side. It can come to the point where somebody has... It can even come to this point where some... You know, because God speaks through dreams and a lot of times they're pretty clear. And a lot of times the dreams are right. And then somebody comes to you about a dream. And then every time they come to you about a dream, it's actually rebuking you. And you're just like, well, that probably means that I'm supposed to be the best man around. Or I'm supposed to be this. Or I'm supposed to be that. But it's... They're saying the total opposite. Because they want to hear something good about themselves. They, or, they, or, they, or what happens is we start doing good for a little while. And then we're like, I'm doing so good. Yeah, everything's going so well. I'm not feeling condemnation. I'm not feeling conviction. And then somebody comes with a dream and it's like, no way. How could that be? I was doing so good. I want to be on, stay on, the, on, the, on, the, on the high rise. But it's not about what you see, man. It's about God. He's building the house. You're the house. He's building it. 
So when we try to build up ourselves, when we try to see what we want to see, he's not going to build us. And then we're going to be like the man. And I pray that nobody in the church is like this, but there will be, unfortunately. So that prayer is kind of stupid. I pray that more people would be like, not be like this man, but there's going to be people that come to the judgment and God's going to say, and they're, and, and they're going to go to the kingdom, but all their works are going to be burned by fire because they decided to build a house on their own because they wanted to see what they wanted to see. But if we see what God wants to see, no matter how it looks, no matter how it sounds, then we'll, he will build the house brick by brick. And you're the house. Every single person in the body, he says, he says that I will put on those who overcome, I will put on their hearts new Jerusalem. You are the new Jerusalem. You are God's Jerusalem. You are God's Israel. You are the foundations. You are the walls. You are the bricks. But when the brick cries out and says, but I want to be over there, that brick better shut up. Or else... It's not going to be good. Better stop crying out and just better be where it's supposed to be and be happy. And why, do bricks, why would the brick cry out? Because it, has, it wants to probably be on the top. It wants to be the top brick. It doesn't want to be the low brick. Instead of enjoying the builder, it wants to be the build did. It wants to be the best. But the least in the kingdom of God are the best. So when we, if the church gets that, that the least are the best, that the ones who lay down their life for their brother and sister, lay down their pride and, and haughtiness for their, for their brother and sister, they will be exalted and they will be the greatest. Not the ones that strive to be the greatest, not the ones that always want to be at the pulpit or be on YouTube or be on Facebook. They won't be the greatest. But the ones that just desires for the kingdom of God to come, that just desires to feed the sheep and raise them up. The one that just desires for just purely God's kingdom. This is our desire. It's for God's kingdom to come on his church and the bride to become a beautiful bride, spotless and white. Amen. No matter what you do, no matter if you just mop the floors or you're preaching or you're praying. That's what your desire is. And if those desires are not your desires alone, I'm going to tell you you're going to be distracted. And we talk about distractions. Why are you so distracted? Because you want other things. So when we want other things... We have God, and then we have idols trying to dance around God, and it's, and it's like, and we're looking over here, and we're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, God, and then we're, we're wondering why we're, we're stuck in witchcraft, and we're stuck in a rut, because we're distracted. How do, I get, how do I not get distracted anymore? Purify your desires. Stop chasing after money. Do what you're supposed to do. Tithe. Do, do everything that God commands you. Give. Have a kingdom mindset and he'll bless you. Why are you chasing after your family? you got a new family now. And you have to just plant the seeds and, and leave them. Like God, like, like, if they want it, they'll get it. They have a free choice. Your family has a free choice. Yes. God's not in this lie that goes around the, king, that goes around the church that, oh, God's going to save you and your household because he said it to that one guy. You know, you know when they say that, it's actually a lie because God saved that. Remember that, that man and, and Paul told him or Peter or one of them, he said, go back and tell them the word of Jesus that you heard it and then you and your household will, will, will get saved. You know why? Because it was a prophecy. So God already knew that when he goes back to his family, his whole household will be saved because they will receive the word. But it's not because he received the word and he believes. It's because... The prophecy had, had God loaded his heart behind it that it was already going to come to pass. So God already knew. It wasn't like that wasn't for everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody in the kingdom. So if everybody, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people have, I'm pretty sure most people have a Christian brother, brother or sister or cousin or aunt or uncle in their family. So what do you mean to tell me? That basically the whole world's going to get saved? No. 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 Most people are, not, few people, few. So where is, so, yeah, we have to. We have to deal with that. If they, we, we, we lay it down and we hope for their lives. But you know what? When we're so focused on the kingdom of God, we're not, we don't get, so I don't, you know what? Personally, I hope they don't see this. But my family, I love them. And yes, I do want them to be saved. But if they, don't, they don't distract me. They don't even, honestly, I just talked to my mom today. She's like, why don't you? Oh, God, I better cut this out. Jeez, I don't stop myself, man. Whatever. She says, why don't you call me? She's not going to watch it because she doesn't watch any of it. 
<laughs> this is for you guys because I'm sure we cut out. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she says, "Why don't you call me?" I'm like, "Mom, because I'm doing my the Father's will. I'm doing. I'm focused on the kingdom. It's not that I don't love you. I love you. But you know what? I can't. I'm focused on on. on and, and it's not even that I don't want to talk to you. It's that my mind is so occupied by him that it didn't even come to mind. And that's and, and then people in the world are like, "Oh, I'm offended. You don't even love me." No, I do love you. But I guess Jesus didn't love his mother either because even when Mary said, I'm here, tell him, he said, only those that do the will of my father, they are the king, they are my family, mother, brother, sister. So he even denied it. And even there was another, I don't even know what part of the Bible it is, but people tell me. But apparently there was another scripture where Jesus was young, 13 years old or whatever. And, and, and she, she, Mary's like, where are you at? Because he was at the temple. He's like, you need to go home or something like that. And he's like, don't you know I'm about my father's business? He's a 13-year-old rebuking his mom. So come on with this family stuff. It's the kingdom of God. And if, our, and if we're always focused on that, or we're always focused on jobs, we're always focused on money, we're only, we only get happy off of those things.